Hey everyone, welcome back. Hopefully everyone's having a good week. If you're new to the channel, I post videos about my investing journey every week. Uh, in this video, I'll be talking about three ASX blue chip stocks that you can consider adding to your portfolio if there's a market crash in July 2020. All right, let's get into it. So the first blue chip stock that I want to talk about is Macquarie Group. Macquarie Group is a global provider of banking, financial advisory, investment and fund management services. It's Australia's fifth largest bank by market cap, uh, along with being one of the largest companies trading on the ASX. Uh, its retail banking services make up just a small percentage of Macquarie's business, with the bank primarily being involved in investment and commercial banking and also asset management. So Macquarie is now in the top 50 global asset managers with more than $540 billion in funds under management. Uh, Macquarie operates in more than 27 countries with uh, specialist investment and asset management expertise in areas such as resource, agriculture and commodities, energy and infrastructure, uh, with particular knowledge of the Asian Pacific region. So currently Macquarie is trading at a price of $120. Uh, dollars and 67 cents with a market cap of around 43 billion PE ratio is 17.71 with a yield of 4.04 uh, just remember to take the yield with a grain of salt this year due to COVID-19 so a lot of the companies might not even um, distribute a dividend this year or even a lower dividend than they would have so let's have a look at the total revenue for Macquarie Group. Uh, in 2017, they produced $4.3 billion in total revenue and $2.2 billion in net income. Uh, they were able to grow their revenues, total revenue to $5.8 billion and $2.7 billion in net income. So we can see that Macquarie is slowly growing and also their net income is also growing at the same time as well. Whereas if we have a look at the big four, um, ComBank, Westpac, ANZ and NAB, we can see that since 2017, uh, they've actually had declining or stable to declining uh, total revenues all the way till 2019. So with that being said, I think Macquarie has better opportunities um, to grow than the big four banks in Australia. Macquarie is by far my favorite ASX bank share. Uh, there's two key reasons why. So the first one is Macquarie generates about two thirds of its earnings outside of the local region. Uh, with the local region being Australia, of course. I think it provides good international diversification, whereas compared to the big four banks, so ComBank, Westpac, ANZ and NAB, they're all heavily focused on Australia and New Zealand. So we can see in the investors' presentation, it produces about 25% of the total income from uh, the Americas, 29% from Europe, uh, Middle East and South Africa, 13% from Asia as well and the 33%, so the one third from Australia and New Zealand. The second reason is that the big four banks generate most of their earnings from loans. So that's either personal loans, business loans, um, home loans. Uh, whereas Macquarie does have a loan book too, but its earnings are more evenly spread across other divisions. So in the next slide of the investors presentation, uh, Macquarie divides their profit contribution in two categories. So the first one is annuity style activities and the second is market facing activities broken into non-banking group and banking group. Uh, so Macquarie has a total of four divisions. Uh, the first one is Macquarie Asset Management, second being banking and financial services, third is commodities and global markets and the fourth being Macquarie Capital. Further, we can see that Macquarie's banking and financial services doesn't make up a lot of their net profit contribution. Uh, most of it comes from Macquarie Asset Management and also commodities and global markets. Let's have a look at the technicals for Macquarie Group. Um, so I think, in my opinion, a great entry point would be $90 to $100. Uh, so another indicator that would show us when a dip would occur is the RSI. Once the RSI hits below 30, so that's on the bottom, um, we can see in the past that at points one and two, whenever the RSI was below 30, it showed a dipping opportunity where investors could pick up some shares at a great price. So for those that don't know what the RSI is, um, in this graph I'm using the stochastic RSI. So when it above 80 it would indicate that the stock is being overbought 
and when the RSI is below 30, it would indicate that the stock is being oversold. So just to summarize, a great entry point would be 90 to 100. Uh, the risk level is medium. Um, in my opinion, I think Macquarie shares are a good mix of growth and yield and definitely worth considering if uh, it's not already in your current portfolio or if you'd like some exposure uh, to the financial sector. The second blue chip uh, that I have on top of my watch list is Transurban Group. So Transurban is one of the world's largest infrastructure investors with an extensive portfolio of toll roads across Australia and North America. Currently, uh, the stock price is at fourteen thirty-five. The market cap is thirty-nine billion. Uh, it's got a ridiculous PE ratio of two hundred and twenty-two, and it yields about three point seven five percent. Transurban owns a virtual monopoly on toll roads in Australia's two largest cities, Sydney and Melbourne, and has an expanding overseas presence as well. Uh, it has 13 roads in its Australian portfolio, and in the US, the company has three roads in the state of Virginia, and two roads in Washington DC area, and one in Canada. And I think uh, it remains well placed to capitalize on growing population uh, in these locations over the next five to 10 years. Let's have a look at the total revenue. In 2017, it produced uh, $2.7 billion in total revenue. Uh, fast forward to 2019, it's been able to produce about $4.2 billion in total revenue. So in terms of revenue breakdown, it makes about 41% uh, from its Sydney toll roads, 30% from Melbourne, uh, 15 to 16% in Brisbane, and the rest being North America. The coronavirus restrictions have forced a rethink of commuting, which could see more Aussies turn to toll roads in 2020. Um, if we see another COVID-19 related share market crash, I think the transurban share price could be caught up in it for sure. And if there is a tidy discount on the offer, I think um, you know it's a great time to buy at a bargain. So Transurban has reported that uh, it's been witnessing a progressive recovery in uh, traffic on its toll networks across Australia. So the positive trend started to begin around mid-April uh, in line with the stage lifting of the government lockdown restrictions uh, as the number of active coronavirus cases gradually dropped. If we have a look at the April traffic performance by asset uh, on the right hand side, we can see that um, the toll roads in uh, North America has been recovering much more slowly uh, due to harsher lockdown restrictions. So we can see that two roads have actually decreased by 80% and one of them is the tolling suspended on. Whereas the rest of the other roads in Sydney and Melbourne um, and also Brisbane as well has declined about uh, mid-20s to almost 60%. A key point to note is the traffic levels on its toll roads remains highly sensitive to any further government action. Um, just in the last few days, the Victorian government has announced that it might introduce uh, stricter lockdown measures in selected areas of Melbourne. So having looking at the technicals of Transurban Group, I'm using the weekly time frame on this chart. Um, again, having looking at the RSI below 30 would present a good buying opportunity. So looking at the two dips on the left, um, every time it was pretty much below 20, uh, we could see that it was a great buying opportunity for any investors that had a long-term time frame. Uh, we can also see the support and resistance level at 1050. So this would be a good opportunity to buy around, uh, in my opinion, 1050 to 1150. So just a brief recap, um, great entry point would be 1050 to 1150. Again, the risk level is medium. Um, it depends on how fast the traffic volumes would eventually get back to normal. So I think this would be a good stock for anyone wanting any industrial sector exposure with a mix of growth and yield. The third and final blue chip that I want to talk about is Rear Group. So Rear Group is a leading property listings company. If you've ever searched for a property online to buy or sell or rent, uh, chances are you have probably used Rear's services, such as uh, realestate.com.au. So the current price is 108.16. 
Uh, market cap is 14 billion. PE ratio is about 32, and it offers a yield of 0 0.82. The company operates Australia's leading property websites and real estate websites in Europe, Asia and the US, uh, providing digital tools, information and data on the property market. In Australia, they operate websites like realestate.com.au, realcommercial.com.au, uh, Flatmates, Spacely, Smartline and HomeTrack. And um, we can see that in Asia and uh, America as well, they operate a bunch of other real estate websites as well. So in terms of total revenue, in 2017, they were able to produce $671 million in total revenue, followed by uh, $206 million in net income. So that's probably around 30%. Um, then we can see that all the way to 2019, they've been able to grow their total revenues to $941 million, uh, probably equating close to 50% in the two years. Now that's pretty impressive. Um, the group has uh, faced difficulties due to COVID-19 restrictions. Uh, property listings fell heavily during April uh, with national listings down 33% according to the Rue Group. Uh, Sydney listings were down 18% and Melbourne listings were down 27%. So I'd imagine that it would affect uh, their total revenue in 2020 by quite a bit. So currently, uh, Rio Group makes most of their revenue from Australia, or probably about nine, over 90% for sure. Um, in terms of revenue split, it's made about $555 million from residential depth and subs, uh, $134 million from commercial and developer depth and subs, and 110 million from media, data, and other, 27 million from financial services, and close to 50 million in Asia. So since FY18, the group's been able to uh, grow the Australian revenue by 8% and grow the Asia revenue by 10%. Over the long term, there's quite a lot, lot of opportunities for Rio Group, uh, especially through their current stakes in overseas property sites in regions uh, where the population is much higher than Australia. For the technicals of Rio Group, uh, it's quite similar to Macquarie and Transurban. So again, uh, when the RSI is below 30, uh, it shows that there's a high probability that the stock is dipping, uh, which makes it a great opportunity to buy. So for Rio, there is a strong support around $70. Um, so I think a great, great buying opportunity would be uh, 80 to $85. Uh, brief recap, a uh, great entry point would be 80 to $85. Again, the risk is medium. Um, if you do have a long-term view, I think it is worth snapping up some shares. I do expect uh, them to return to normal once the pandemic uh, passes. There wasn't much volume of property listings during uh, the worst period of coronavirus lockdown, but now there's a bit more activity. And also once JobKeeper ends in September, there could be forced sellers, so more properties could come onto the market. So these are the three blue chips that I think are worth considering if there's a market crash uh, in July 2020. So let me know what you guys think of these three uh, blue chips and also let me know what blue chips you guys are looking at to buy when there's a market crash as well. Hopefully, I gave you guys some ideas. Um, you know, if if you found it helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe as well. Uh, I've also made a video on two growth stocks um, and also three stocks for recovery. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that video yet, uh, please check it out. I'll have a link in the description as well. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching the video. If you guys are interested in my portfolio update, uh, I'll quickly give a brief portfolio update, so stay tuned. This week, the current portfolio is sitting at 66740 uh, My portfolio went up 1.16%, which equates to about $742, uh, while the SPY was down 0.47%. So this week I sold two positions, uh, one on the ASX and one on the New York Stock Exchange, uh, Kathmandu and Revolve Group. 
The reason I sold these two was to get some tax write-offs uh, for the gains that I have made this year. The total that I've lost on Revolve was almost $600 and Kathmandu was just over 1000 So that's a nice 1.5k. Oh, sorry, 1.6k. I've started to buy a position in Tesla. So my average cost basis is about... $1,018 USD. Uh, so far, it's done quite well in the last couple of days, uh, up $600 at the moment. Uh, I originally bought Tesla around $300 in USD, but sold it around $600. Uh, that was a big mistake on my part. Um, I'll start trusting Elon again and never bet against him. I have about 6.2K in cash from the sales uh, from the past week. So what I plan to do is wait for Tesla's quarterly result. Um, if that doesn't go well, uh, that's my opportunity to buy. Uh, but if it does, uh, I might look for another different opportunity, uh, something like Square or maybe even add more to uh, Slack. That wraps it up for the week. Thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. And also, if you enjoy these types of videos, uh, please also consider subscribing as well.